Hi, in this video, as a non-admin user called LDAP Dev1, I'm going to create a DBAS provider account. And I'm going to do it from my Dev1 project one. So let's go to Rhoda admin menu, which is under data services, database access. You can see the provider account and the corresponding database instances that have been imported by the admin. From configuration, we will going to import database provider account. It's important to note that in R3, as a non-admin user, you can create provider accounts in your namespace. Also, Amazon Relational Database Service, RDS, is a new addition to the supported database services. Now, the mandatory fields for adding Amazon RDS provider are the access key ID, the secret access key, and the AWS region for the RDS service. Uh, also give a name for the provider account with which you can easily identify it. Then finally, uh, select import button to import the account. Going back to the database access dashboard, you'll see any previously provisioned database instances which will show up as Rhoda adopted instances. Let me show you how to create a new RDS database instance from the AWS free tier. Go to the create database instance. We'll select the database provider. In this case, we'll select Amazon Relational Database Service. First, we have only one provider account here, and then we will assign an instance name, just RDS MySQL, say in case you want to spin up a SQL server. And as you can see, those were the three uh, database engines that are supported in the free tier. And then finally you hit create. Let's go behind the scenes to see the OpenShift operators that are in play here. OpenShift database access operator is the Rhoda meta operator that pulls in other provider operators, including ACK for Amazon RDS. Rhoda also implemented an operator that integrates RDS controller to enable existing RDS provider accounts and also creating new database instances from AWS tier. If you go to the Amazon RDS console, you'll notice the database instance we initiated from Rhoda. This is the Postgres database instance that I created from Rhoda earlier. One important thing to note is allowing external access to the database port so that your applications can access the RDS instances from the OpenShift cluster. This is done by enabling the inbound rules for the security group. Now, as you can see, the Postgres traffic, which comes on port 5432, is open to all external IPs. In non-test environments, you'll restrict it to IP address of the OpenShift cluster. Let's switch to the developer role and test the RDS Postgres database with a demo app. We wrote this app originally for CockroachDB, but it should also work with RDS Postgres. So this is the Hibernate ORM program that demonstrates accessing a Postgres compatible SQL table using Java Quarkus framework. Now from the project object model file, you'll sh see that we are using service binding library. Now it's used by the program to extract the credentials for database connection at runtime. Let's grab the, the GitHub URL and go back to OpenShift. Now let's open a terminal session. What we're going to do is git clone the application. We will then use the deploy app YAML file to create an application pod from a pre-built image in the Quay registry. Okay, when the application pod comes up, you know, you'll see that it goes into an error state. You'll notice in the view logs that the, it is because of the database connection, it's missing. You know, and so the service binding API is trying to look for database service. So let's add the database service. Let's go to AWS and then you'll find our Postgres instance here. So let's select that. Now, if you click on the learn more link, you will see other sample programs 
that we have created that shows uh, using service binding library with database access for different you know programming frameworks okay now let's drag the service binding uh, from the pod to the connection and we'll create the service binding now as, as you'll notice the pod just restarted and the restarted pod now has the database credentials injected into it now if you look in the logs you will notice that a the connection was established successfully and also we create the database table and also we initialize it with some you know entries let's go back to the topology and if you check the url for the rest interface you have the user interface for the application let's go ahead and add a fruit let's add mango my favorite and save and bingo and it's all there 